So I just watched Twilight for the first time in a couple of years and I forgot how bad it was. I knew it was bad. Like I would hate watch it like in high school, I guess. But then I was like, okay, it's not so bad. But when I rewatched it after like being an adult, like it's super weird, it's creepy and we need to talk about it. So in middle school, I read all the books is there four books or five? Maybe Breaking Dawn is two books. I don't know. But I read all of them. I was obsessed with them. I was like a wannabe emo kid in sixth grade. So I was like, me and Bella are so similar. Like, I'm also quirky and like clumsy and like, I don't know. Like, every girl in middle school wanted to be Bella because she was like weird and like had brown hair. So she was like not typically like pretty. And, like, she found a rich, hot, like, vampire guy to, like, be in love with her. Also, like, this movie changes after the lens of, like, seeing Fifty Shades. Like, all the Fifty Shades movies. I also read all those books and, like, saw all those movies. And obviously they're based off of, like, Twilight fan fiction. Everybody blames the source material for Fifty Shades as, like, creepiness and, like, um, problematicness and, like um like normalizing kind of or romanticizing a really manipulative and like gross relationship and everybody blames it on like the fan fiction itself because it was like serial writing so like it's not structured very well and like the writing's pretty bad and the like dialogue is really bad and weird um but if you look at the source material the source material of the source material which would be twilight uh, that's where, like, the problem stems from. Like, Edward is so creepy and, like, weird and, like, weirdly dominant. So, I'm not, I'm not surprised that the lady, who I Dragon Snow Queen, what's her name? Like, the author of Fifty Shades. I'm not surprised that she, like, made one where Edward was into, like, BDSM. Because Edward is fucking weird in this movie. Also, okay, I wanted to talk about the casting. Are we okay with this casting? Like... Edward's weird. Like, I don't, Robert Pattinson just, like, I read the books in that, I remember in Sixth six Grade Me was pissed that Robert Pattinson was cast as Edward. Because it's like, I don't know, he just has, like, red hair, which, I don't know, just, like, be hotter. I don't know. Everybody nowadays in, like, movies, like, has abs. Like, they're, like, Chris Pratt. Like, you're, like, known as, like, the chubby, funny actor, but, like, get some abs for guardians you know what I mean like everybody's expected to have abs but like I don't know in 2012 like we we're just okay with Robert Pattinson being like a skinny looking ghoul Jacob on the other hand casting Taylor Lautner me and shark boy go way back love shark boy that was great casting he has abs I'm just saying if it's like a teen romance story they should have abs am I just wrong am I wrong is there anybody that likes Robert Pattinson is as Edward, he's like weird and like also the casting of Bella, like are we okay with her too? Okay. She does okay. She's better in the later movie. They make her look prettier in the later movies. So like in the first movie she's like I don't know, there's something weird with her hair where like it's like two toned, like the top of it is like light brown, but the bottom of it is like dark brown makes it look like a weird like highlight situation I don't know I guess she's okay she's better in the later movies for sure um that brings me to the acting it's so bad it's just bad like every line is red like they're like constipated or like chopped up like they're like Bella I need you like, it's, like, weird. Like, nothing flows. And, like, it's not like the dialogue itself is very, like, naturally written, I guess. But it could be read so much better. The best actors in this movie are the Cullens. Like, the Cullen family, besides Edward. They, like, do the most... They're the most natural. They seem like a family. Like, Carlisle seems like a dad. And, like, Esme seems like a, like a chill mom that's like, oh, my God, I'm so happy to be my son's girlfriend. And, like, Alice's character. Alice's casting is perfect. And she's a good actress. She reads her lines, like, 
a normal person would say them, not like a weird, constipated man, boy. Um, another thing that I wanted to hit on was the soundtrack. The soundtrack is iconic. Everybody knows the soundtrack because it's amazing. Sixth grade emo wannabe Danny was like bumping that shit all the time, all the time. It was amazing. The like Bella's lullaby like part, everybody, everybody in my middle school would play that on the bus. Like no joke. Like that's what we listened to on the way to school was Bella's lullaby. The most egregious, nasty, horrible, worst part of this movie is that there is a blue green filter over the entire thing and not like subtly. It's, it is distracting for most of the movie. Like some of the scenes, like the scene in the ballet studio looks like day for night. It looks like it's supposed to be nighttime, but there's obviously like sun shining in through the windows. Like it, it's literally so distracting. So maybe that's why I have a problem with like Bella's hair color. Cause like the filter like makes it look more different. I'm also a hundred percent on team Jacob. And I was when I read the books too. Like in sixth grade, sixth grade Danny was team Jacob and I was right. Like I was, I've been right this whole time. Like as an adult watching this movie, Edward is so like, ew, ew, cringy, gross, like says weird things, is full of red flags. And like, I get that he's like a vampire, but like, it's not romantic by the time they like get together. It's not romantic by the time they get together because he's so like weird, awkward, and like says things to her. Like there's one scene where they're in like the forest and she's like, you're a vampire. And he's like running around her. Like she's like tra chasing him through the forest when they both know that she's like clumsy, but he's still like running away from her over rocks and shit. And she's like following him, like tripping over stuff. And she's like, wait, wait, wait. Um, that's weird. Like just stop and like talk like a normal, have a normal conversation. Duh. And then they like, there's a scene, they're like this and the camera's like right up on their faces, like on their profiles. And she's like, and so the lion fell in love with the lamb. Oh no, so the lamb fell in love with the lamb. Some, something like that. I'm like, so the lion fell in love with the lamb. And he's like, what a sick masochistic lion. Like he called himself masochistic. Like that is, they like just met like two days before that. And it's so weird. And like, and so I, again, I'm not surprised that like Fifty Shades was like going in that direction. Like he said that word in that movie. So besides like that, like straight up saying he's masochistic, he also like 50 times is like, stay away from me. I'm not good for you. Stay away from me. Don't come near me. She's like, no, Edward, I don't believe that you have a soul. Like you're good. Like some advice is like, if a guy, if the guy himself is telling you to stay away from him, do that. Like, don't ignore that. Like if a guy was like, stay away from me, I'm no good for you. I'd be like, but okay, peace. Like uh, we don't, m all men are trash. And if the man is telling you that he's trash or your face, like you gotta get out of there, girly. Like it's not, no good. No good can come of it. So that's why I like Jacob. Jacob's like, Bella, I'll never let you down. I think that's a new moon. I also watched a new moon like right after because <laughs> I had to compare Jacob to Edward again because Jacob's like not in the movie that much in the first one but he like shows him he like announces himself as a presence it's also short hair Jacob doesn't come until the second one until new moon so Jacob tells Bella all the time I won't let you down I'm I'm good for you he's not good for you all this stuff and Jacob does that shit Jacob's building her like motorcycles and stuff and always there and like nice also Jacob's nice he never says anything weird like, I think, like, more later in the movie is when he gets a little bit more confident. But in Twilight, he never says anything, like, weird or gross or, like, stay away from me. He's actually really nice to her. He, like, fixed her truck before she even got it, before he even met her. Like, I don't know. And he has abs.
times. So Jacob comes in before Edward, right? And he's wearing like the most atrocious lace front I've ever seen in my life. It's like nasty. It's so hard to look at. And I guess they like have the long hair until they like chop it off when they become a werewolf. But like, it looks bad and like weird. And I get it. But like the wig budget could have been a little bit higher. I'm just saying. The scene where we're introduced to Edward, like, the Cullens are walking in in twos, like, ten Mississippi apart from each other. So it's like, Rosalie and Emmett come in. Great casting for those, by the way. Um, and then Alice and Jasper come in, and Anna Kendrick is saying, Anna Kendrick's in this movie! And then Anna Kendrick starts talking about how, like, weird they all are, because they're, like, foster siblings but they're like hooking up with each other which is weird that is weird I don't know why that's like accepted in the books or like why that was even a thing like is there no other they have to be a family and like can't they just when they go to the school like not make out with each other because they're siblings like to everybody else like they literally have the rest of eternity because they never die to like kiss and stuff also why can't you just say that you're homeschooled like Vampires don't need to be socializing with humans. Anyway, so they walk in and then Edward's the last one to walk in without like a buddy. All the rest of the clones have buddies. And he walks in and like, just the second I see like Rob Pattinson and his like face, like weird, like, like vampire face, whatever he's trying to do. I'm, at that moment, I was like, this was bad casting. I don't like Robert Pattinson as Edward. I think it's all wrong. Okay, so they the Collins walk in, they sit down. Uh, they all sit at the same table. So like, again, why even go to school if you're not gonna have friends? Like, what is the point? So they're all sitting at their same table and like Bella's like looking over her shoulder at him like this. Like, oh, she's wearing this like nasty green bowling shirt over a long sleeve shirt. Like that was the that was the outfit that the like clothing department chose for the first time that she was gonna see Edward. So she's looking at him all weird, like. And then Edward like turns his head and he's like, and he like it's just so awkward. And if a guy looked at me like that, I'd be like, what is it? like, okay, that was weird. Like I thought he was cute, but like he's just like kind of creepy. And that's it. And then that would be the end of it. So then, uh, obviously she sees him in the science class. We all know the science scene. The whole time he looks like he's gonna like vomit or like perhaps diarrhea on the floor of the classroom. Like, and in some scenes it like cuts to them and like cuts away and then it cuts back. And he's like staring at her like full on like, and she's just like, mm, I'm just not gonna look at it. Like, wouldn't you be like, hi what's your problem like or like when you first sat down when you'd be like hi or like smile or something like i don't know just everybody in this movie acts so weird especially like the two main characters they're so like just awkward it's so awkward and i don't like it makes me not want them to be together her in the scenes with her and jacob they're like talking normally and they're talking about their dads like whatever they have things in common I like want her and Jacob to be together. I don't care about her and Edward. They're like two awkward people that like suck. Okay, and then she's like, she's narrating throughout the film, but not like constantly, which I kind of hate from book adaptations because it's like, if you're gonna make a movie, then just make the movie. If you can't portray in a character's thoughts, they're just like the actions of the movie. Should you adapt it from the book? I don't know. Okay, so then she's like, I'm gonna confront him but she like didn't confront him already like she also had the rest of the school day and she shot she saw him again after the sign class in the office and still didn't say anything she like walks in the office and he thinks he's like I need to get out of biology and he's like fine I'll just suffer and he like turns around and she's there and then he walks out and then she just walks out so she didn't even need to go to the office okay so she's like I'm gonna confront him but again like didn't confront him at all but then he like skips school so he's gone from school, which, why do they go to school at all again? I don't know. Why didn't he just walk out of the science class? Why skip, why even, why even go the rest of the day? Why even go to the office and try to get a chance? Just walk out and never return. Like you're a vampire. Like you can steal stuff. 
You can like, you don't need money. You don't need to educate. You don't need to go to school. I don't understand. Okay, so then eventually Edward comes back to school and he's like sitting in a uh, science class. They see each other in biology again. And he goes, hello. It's like such a weird, hello. It's like, it's so weird. Like the, fir the first words like to each other are just like so awkward. And then they're like, I think that they're trying to do a thing where like, they're like, Bella's smart too. Like Bella knows her stuff too. Cause they're like doing a little like science lab or whatever, but it just like comes off like weird. And they're trying to like show each other up. Like, I don't know. Again, I don't want this relationship to happen. I don't want it to work. And then also during the scene a lot, she's going like, <laughs> like she does that all the time. She's like, I don't like cold, wet things. It's so weird. Like what? When she read the script, like, why would she like, uh, this character, like, makes a lot of, like, <clears throat> like, weird, like, noises. I don't, like, Kristen Seward, like, what were you doing, girly? Okay, so, like, a pivotal scene in the movie is when he saves her. That's when she starts thinking he's, like, weird. And, like, she, like, got a hint already because his eyes changed color after he left school. And he, like, came back and they were, like, brighter or whatever. And they like zoom in on his eye and she's like, did you get contacts? But you can like see the contact. And he's like, no. This movie. Okay, so then the pivotal scene is he saves her from the car and the like truck like slides on the ice and he like has to save it. He like stops a van with his hand and like saves Bella. So then she starts getting like inklings that he's a vampire and she's like in the hospital and she's like, you stopped the van. I saw you stop the van. Like, how did you do that? And instead of like denying till you die he's just like well no one's gonna believe you which first of all is like a gross thing to say like no guy needs to be like well nobody's gonna believe you if you say that like that's a red flag and two deny till you die bro don't be like yeah i did but nobody's gonna believe you that you said that like just keep denying okay so then like i think it's that night she's like in bed she's like uh, like it's like weird it's like a weird like scene and she's like <laughs> And she like wakes up and he's standing right there. And then she like turns on the light and she like looks back and he's gone. But like, she caught, she caught him. Like she caught him. And instead of like calling the police and being like, Edward Cullen was in my house. She's like, oh, well, like, oh my gosh. She's like, what? like, oh my God. And the whole watching her sleep thing, like while we're on the subject. Sixth grade wannabe emo Danny thought that that was real cool like I was like oh my gosh that's so man he like watches her sleep like he doesn't need to sleep but he like stays there all night and like with her like to protect her and, like watches her sleep. no uh watching people sleep is creepy and it's a red flag and it's weird so when they're on the field trip he goes what's in Jacksonville because she told somebody else that uh she was going to Jacksonville and he's like what's in Jacksonville and she goes how do you know about that and he just goes well you didn't answer my question like Ew, what a, what a gross thing to say. Like, don't say, ugh, another red flag. So, like, after that exchange, like, he's like, uh, you didn't answer my question. Then she, like, trips on something, and he's like, watch where you're going, would you? Like, so he, like, gets mad at her for hurting herself, which is also another red flag. Like, it wasn't, she, like, accidentally did something, he's getting all mad. Like, it doesn't forebode well for your relationship when he gets mad that you accidentally did something. And then right after that, he tells her, like, you don't know anything. Like, tells her that she doesn't... <laughs> like, so he's called her stupid. He's, like, surprised that she knows stuff in science. Like, he just, like, talks down to her all the time. It's so obvious. And then, like, I don't know. Like, why would anybody root for them to be together? The next thing that happens is the fucking apple scene. I rebuke this apple scene. It's so stupid. It, like, the apple, like, rolls off her tray and bounces off his shoe and he, like, catches it like this. And like, I guess it's supposed to be a callback to like the book's cover, but it's just, it's just dumb. Like he's using his vampire powers at school, which is against the rules and it serves no purpose and it's stupid and it looks bad and the visual effects are bad and he's st stupid and he looks bad and it's just all, I hate this scene. I hate it so much. I don't know why it's in there. So like after like that whole like, uh, field trip scene, I was like gross and Jacob shows back up in the movie and they're like walking along the beach. And she asks him, like, why, uh, why is your tribe, like, hate the Cullens or whatever? And he just answers her question so politely. He, like, listens to her and answers. I was like, 
wow yep, like at this point in the movie they're really getting into like the villains part like i feel like they established all the stuff that they wanted to and now they're getting into the villains which like the main villain is the guy from burlesque even though it seems like the other uh dread vampire but it's the guy from burlesque with eyeliner on the visual effects in the scene are so atrocious like i'm not scared at all it takes me immediately out of the scene they don't look scary they look like like the running part of the vampires is like a key part. So I don't know why they didn't figure out a better visual effect for that. So then she goes to the mall and gets attacked by, I guess not attacked. She like gets surrounded by like these guys and Edward who is stalking her, uh, drives up and like saves her, I guess. Like, wow, thank you for stalking me so you could save me. Like, I guess. So then he like admits to stalking her. He takes her to dinner. He talks down to her again because she's like, I need to ask you a question. He's like, uh, to get to the other side. And then starts like, he's like 1.1 1. 1 something, blah, blah, blah. Like, and she goes, I don't need to know the square root of pi. And he's like, you know what that is. Like talks down to her again. <laughs> and then he like admits to her in the restaurant that he reads minds. And she's just like, oh, whoa, like cool. Like, she doesn't ask any- I'd be like, how does that work? Also, you're not reading minds. The voices inside your head are talking to you. Like, you're- like, I get that it's supposed- to, like, we're supposed to have some suspension of disbelief here. Like, it's the story, like, Bella should have some. But, like, as a grown adult woman, I would be like, you're not reading people's minds. They're coming back from the restaurant, and they stop at the police station, where they find out that that guy was murdered. And, like- <laughs> Carlisle's coming out of the police station and he says he just examined the body. So like Carlisle, who's a doctor, like a surgeon, I assume, he like seems like a general surgeon, is also the county's medical examiner. And also the medical examinations are done inside of the police station. It, then he comes down and he starts blabbing to Bella and Edward about like an unsolved murder <laughs> that he just did the medical examination on the body for. Like, that happens <laughs> they leave and Bella's standing there in the parking lot and <laughs> they roll the body by and it's just like it's a body that they put a blanket over like on a gurney but like the feet are sticking out the bottom of the blanket so like they did a medical examination on his body in the police station then they just threw a blanket over him and were like okay like time to transport it to where I don't know uh but we don't have a body bag, so we're just gonna put this blanket on, just let the feet hang out, and roll it out the front door of the police station for just anybody who's standing out there. So then Bella goes home, she googles vampires, she like figures out that he's a vampire, she tells him, you're a vampire, then he's like, okay, I need to show you something, takes her up above <laughs> the cloud line on the mountain, and like shows her like the sun thing, like the shimmering effect, but every time they do the shimmering effect, it makes a sound effect. I don't understand the sound mixing choice. I can see what's happening. Some of the things like when he's reading somebody's mind, if there's like a little ambient sound that like lets me know that that's what he's doing, like that makes sense. Or like when Alice is having a vision and she's like, like they're not gonna do the that's so raven thing where they like zoom into the eye. Like that's great. So if she's just like staring there, like if they had a little sound so that I know that's what she's doing because I can't like see it. But if I can see something like a shimmering, skin i don't need a wind chime sound effect it's so it again took me out of the scene i was like what the fuck? okay so then after this the narration comes back in after like an hour <laughs> into the movie and she goes i knew three things for sure that edward was a vampire which we already know that he wanted to kill me which we also already know and that i was irrevocably in love with him like we already know Again, I don't like the narration and I super don't like it when it's just telling me three things that I've literally already seen in the, like they've said out loud, you're a vampire. I don't need her character narrating that to me. So she goes over and meets his family. So then they go upstairs and he like flings her on his back and like sprints out the window and like grabs onto a tree and he goes, You better hold on tight, spider monkey. What kind of pet name is spider monkey? I don't like it. It's not natural. I hate it. I don't know if that line was in the books. I don't remember, but like, oh my God. Anyway, so they're like, again, the most terrible visual effects I've seen in my whole life.
I guess it's supposed to be like a romantic scene, like he's showing her the mountains and stuff. But the visual effects are so bad, it looks so stupid. And he's like Spider-Man climbing up trees. It looks so horrible. And later that night, uh, he beanies into her room and he admits to breaking and entering into her room for months to watch her sleep, like tells her that to her face, which is stupid. I deny till you die again, bro. Like why, why does he get that? Anyway, so admits to um, beaning and she's like, oh wow, he like watches me sleep. So then, uh, then segues into like, so like the whole uh, second part of the movie, the whole rest of the plot is kicked off by a baseball game. So they, he go, she goes and plays baseball with his family. And while they're playing the evil vampire show up, again, it seems like the dread vampire, that's how they refer to him in the movie. So that's how I'm going to refer to him. The one with the dread seems like he's in charge, but really the main villain that ends up being the villain later is the is the burlesque guy with eyeliner. So I don't, again, I don't know why they, and this whole time, okay, so he gets a whiff of Bella, like the wind blows and he like smells her. And then, uh, so then Edward whisks her off in his Jeep. He's driving like 60 miles per hour, like through the straight up woods, like avoiding trees and stuff, which is uh, like terrifying. And like, she's, she's sitting there like this the whole time while he's like yelling exposition at her. Like, James is a hunter and he wants to hunt you. And it's all about the hunt for him. He'll never stop until he gets you. Like, why wouldn't you establish that over the whole movie? Like all the scenes where James is in, first of all, I don't know why they had the dread vampire. He's literally useless. He comes to the Cullens to tell them that James is coming after Bella, which we already knew because Edward read his mind. So we already knew that. No point in him. Delete him as a character. Then like at the baseball thing, like, I don't know. He could have said once or like when they were killing that guy on the boat, he could have been like, wow, like I, I've i been hunting you for like whenever, like months. Like I smelled you months ago and I had to like, like something like that. Like something where it establishes that he's like a hunter. So, oh, so this is supposed to be like the point or the plot like picks up. But they do such a bad job establishing the danger going forward that I don't really know, like, what's happening until, like, the end. Like, until, like, I'll get into it. Edward whisks off in his Jeep. He yells exposition at her. And then, so they meet back at the Cullen's house. And Edward's like, okay, uh, Alice and Jasper, you guys head south with Bella. Okay, south is Phoenix. Like, they went from Washington to Phoenix. That's not like head south, like I'd be like, go to Phoenix, you know? So that was like a weird, that was weird. Anyway, so then they go to Phoenix, uh, James finds them and follows them. He lures her into a ballet studio. This is another scene where it literally looks like day for night. Like she leaves, she goes by herself to the ballet studio, which I realize is dumb. So goes, there's like uh, windows, big windows on the top where the sun, she leaves the hotel in the daytime. And the sun is shining through the windows in the ballet studio. So you can like see the sun, but they put the blue filter over. So it looks like it's supposed to be nighttime, but it's not supposed to be nighttime. So James starts being the shit out of Bella and like flies across the dance floor. Like, <laughs> like he looks like, like a cat or something. It looks so dumb. So I'm already like, this is dumb. So then he like throws her against the wall and she cuts an artery in her leg. So like, again, I didn't know it was like that serious of an issue until he like slices her leg open, like he doesn't slice her leg, but her leg gets sliced open by broken glass. And then he breaks the, like her bones, her like shin bone with his hand. Like, pfft. so like, I didn't know he was like that rough of a dude until like he already started doing the stuff. Anyway, so then he like tries to suck her blood, which everybody got sucked in the neck, but he like bit her wrist. So we can see the scars and all the rest of the movies. So, he like bites her, but Edward like throws him off. So, <laughs> so she starts turning, I guess, I guess like they don't inject their venom. It's like always just on their teeth. So whoever they bite, like, I guess they have to drink the blood fast enough so that they don't turn. What if they turn before you're done? So weird. That's a dumb rule. Anyway, so then Edward like starts fighting him while she's turning. They all, all the rest of them show up. James dies. And then... Edward has to suck the blood, suck the venom out of Bella's 
arm, but not drink too much so she doesn't lose too much blood, even though her artery in her thigh has been, like a major artery has been sliced open. Uh, he does that, which is supposed to be like romantic, like, oh my gosh, wow, he didn't like eat her. He like stopped himself from eating her. Who cares? Okay, what a great guy. So she wakes up in the hospital and her mom's there and she's like, uh, you went to Edward's hotel and you fell down a flight of stairs and went through a window. So like, great backstory, guys. Good job making that up. And then, so her mom leaves and Edward tries to break up with her in the hospital. She's like in, in the hospital bed with a broken leg. She can't do anything. She almost died. And he's like, we shouldn't be together. Anyway, so she convinces him to not break up with her, which is what you should do in a relationship. You should be constantly convincing your significant other to not break up with you. Anyway, so then they go to prom and this girl, her leg is still uh, broken. So she's like in a boot, which is fine, but she's wearing like a knee length dress, which is fine too. wear whatever you want to prom, but with leggings underneath <laughs> and converse. Like, what a quirky girly. She just is not like other girls. So they, like, go to prom. Uh, Jacob crashes her prom. He's wearing, like, a tie. But he's, like, not going... He says he's not going in the prom. So that's also, like, a weird choice. And he, like, shows him. He's like, hey, Bella, my dad said that you should stop dating Edward. Like, Jacob's dad to Bella is, like, her dad's old friend. So I'd be like, why does your... Why does my dad's, like, old man friend want me to stop dating my boyfriend? Like, that's weird. Like, she should stop dating Edward, but, like, it's just a weird, like, dynamic. Like, if one of my dad's friends was, like, you should stop dating your boyfriend, I'd be, like, why are you, like, concerned about that? That's so weird. Like, you don't... No old man needs to be, like, in my business. They're, like, in the prom, they start dancing at Pavilion, which is a scene that they stole from a Cinderella story just saying <laughs> they like then bella says that she wants to be turned like into a vampire forever kids like freak out about picking what college they're gonna go to when they're 17 like should they be picking who they want to spend like the rest of eternity with like it feels at 17 it feels like you want to spend the rest of eternity with this person but they've known each other she started school in march and this is may in prom like, she's known this dude for three months, and she's like, I, like, not the rest of her life, like, forever, till the earth dies. That's, like, that's, okay, so it's already stupid, and I'm already not rooting for this whole movie has not set them up, like, as a great couple together. He just seems, like, controlling and weird and, like, hiding stuff from her. Then <laughs> the movie's ending. It, uh, pans up into, like, a window. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like a lady like watching Edward and Bella and she's like she's dressed up like it's prom and she turns around and it's the vampire lady James's girlfriend from the villain vampire crew <laughs> she's like dressed up for prom like why like just run fast nobody can see you if you run fast that's like been established so I don't know why she had to dress up I guess she just wanted to go to like a high school prom and Forks High School. Okay. And then <laughs> as like as the credits roll, she like turns around, like pulls out her hair in slow motion, like out of the bun. And it like flows down. It's so like what a terrible ending to a terrible movie. Twilight's horrible. The book is probably horrible. I don't remember. In sixth grade, I thought it was a masterpiece, but it's probably real bad. Uh the dialogue's bad. The fucking filter is atrocious and distracting, terrible. Like the villains are not well established. <laughs> so you can see how every derivation of this story has been bad, like all the way to the last Fifty Shades movie. Like we can we can blame Twilight for this, is my point. Twilight is bad, Team Jacob forever.